Eugene Melnick. So today I'm wearing an Ottawa Senators jersey and hat, although this doesn't really involve the Senators team. Let's be honest. Eugene Melnick, he, he bought the Senators August 26th to 2013. He's been their owner for almost 20 years. And throughout that time, he has managed to take a lot of people off. And yet, it would be, you know, pretty easy for people to say, well, they've had some success with him as the owner. So, you know, until the players want more money and then they're gone. And there's, there's definitely a pattern with Melnick, and this is part of the reason why when you're being sold this, this idea that, hey, the Senators are going to build to unprecedented levels of success over the next few years, I kind of put an asterisk next to that and go, yeah, we'll see, we'll come back to that. So it might feel like you're picking on a guy when you're talking about him regularly. And it might feel like you're, you're picking on a franchise when you're talking about their owner regularly. But this is not about the Ottawa Senators team on the ice. And this is not about the job Pierre Dorian's doing, because Dorian is doing his best to to make lemonade out of these lemons he keeps getting thrown. 2017, of course, this team was within a win of making the Stanley Cup Finals. And then things kind of fell apart the year after. Now, did they overachieve in the 2017 playoffs? Probably. Did they underachieve to start the 2017-2018 season? Sure. Was the Duchesne deal a, a, a mistake? Yes. And I think Ottawa would admit that was a mistake. I think Pierre Dorian, if he sat him down and said, hey, would you still do the Duchesne deal today if you had the chance? I think he would say no. But again, with Melnick, since he's bought the team, he makes it about himself a lot. Now, apparently in 2017, the most recent number I could find, he's worth $1.2 billion. But the Ottawa citizen says he might not be a billionaire at all. That his money that peaked at around $1.5 billion, he might have hundreds of millions of dollars, but his, his empire that he had built has really fallen. Now, with billionaires, that's a big thing. Once you have the B next to your name, you're a billionaire. You don't ever want to lose that title. And with what we've seen with Melnick, he might be one of these guys who maybe he's not a billionaire anymore, but he wants to keep that title. I know with WWE, Vince McMahon, billionaire. And even if it came out that McMahon wasn't, I think he would still keep that title. He would not want to lose that title as being a billionaire. There's a pride thing that goes with that. Sort of like, hey, look, I am a billionaire. And you probably aren't. Whereas if you say, I'm a millionaire. I used to be a billionaire. Now I'm a millionaire because I thought I had too much money. Nobody says that. But you don't get to be a billionaire and you don't get to have hundreds of millions of dollars by sharing. And you don't get it by being really, really nice to everybody either. There is sort of that dog-eat-dog -dog mentality there. Now, for Melnick, he's also shown he's willing to eat his own. Now, again, he buys the Senators in 2003 and it at the hockey level, has been relatively quiet with him until 2017. December 15th, 2017, in red, these are videos I've done. That's why I have the dates on them too. Melnick talking relocation. And that came out. Like, oh, well, fans won't come out. It'd be a shame if I had to move them. And then immediately he backtracks. As soon as the media picks up, he's like, well, when I said I was thinking about maybe moving them, what I meant was uh, something else. I didn't mean that. I wouldn't actually move the team. You would, Eugene. You absolutely would. Uh, I think he'd sell it to Barbados just so he could live down there if he had the chance. If Barbados puts up a hockey rink and puts up some money, there we go. Now, he did buy them at $92 million, and the last I saw, the team's valuation, I think, is at $350 million, which isn't bad, right? That's a good profit if he decides to sell. Wink. Uh, September 10th, 2018, that's where the, the Borvietsky interview happens. That's where we all sort of sat around and went, what is this? And then the thing that stood out to me, and I'll mention it again here, was that Melnick wasn't wearing a new Adidas jersey. I thought it was really weird that an owner that was a billionaire wasn't wearing a brand new jersey of the team, you know, to sort of say, hey, this will drive, this will drive some sales. I'll wear a brand new jersey. I'll look, you know, this will be good. I would do that myself if I was an over team and be like, hey, throw me one of the new jerseys. Uh, you know, I'll wear that for this interview because, you know, it shows that I'm supporting the team and maybe it drives a couple of sales to the website. I don't know. But I thought it was weird that he was wearing. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a knockoff. I wouldn't be surprised if we look back at that footage and go, does that say, is that Chinese? Is that, that's not right. That's from China. It wouldn't surprise me. So the Borbietsky interview was one of, we're going to have a great time. This is going to be great. This is going to be the greatest time ever in the history of Ottawa. And poor Borowiecki, you know, hey, he's a warrior. He fought through it. September 19th of 2019, he wanted his jet back. 
We remember this, right? Where uh, Flight Path Charter Airways were owed $693,524.19 for the operation, maintenance, and storage of his jet. They're like, fine, we'll keep your jet until you pay this. And Melnick's like, nah, you'll just give me my jet back. Or you could pay us. Nah, I don't think I'm going to be doing that. Give me my jet back. And this, again, this is how a guy becomes a billionaire. You, you rack up debts, you declare bankruptcy, you sell things off, you just, that's, oh, this is turning ugly? Well, that's not, that's not mine then. That's, uh, that's yours now. Ta-da, you're the new owner. Uh, congratulations. Look, he's the new owner. It's Mr. Burns, basically. Now, of course, a Connecticut, Connecticut casino has also sued Melnick over a $900,000 debt. So gambling and between that and his jet, that's $1.5 million. And this is the money we know about. Keep in mind, he's, he's you know, a billionaire. We'll just give him that. We'll say he's a billionaire. Billionaire owner. How much money do you not know about? How much money do you not know about that might be going out the door? Maybe he's bad at the stock market. We'll come back to that. Now, this is one I found while I was researching for this video. And I was like, seriously, he did this? So his pilot, Luella Morgan... Uh, she resigned as his chief pilot, so she put in her two weeks' notice. Goes, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave. I'm done. Well, Melnick didn't take it well. Uh, her last paycheck didn't go into the bank. So even though she had been the pilot and she had worked that time, he goes, yep, screw her then. And they fired her. She goes to work and they're like, yeah, we don't need you anymore. Sorry. So she gave her notice, and then he wouldn't pay her for the work she'd done, and he boots her out before her two weeks are done. She had to take him to court. For ten, for tw about almost thirteen thousand dollars, she wins the ruling, and last I saw, the senators have appealed it. Eh, well, you know what? We're not going to pay her that thirteen grand that they owe her. That the that, that the judge said, yeah, you owe her for that that work she did. Pay her. Nope. So he is willing to go through court multiple times, which is not free, in order to make sure he doesn't have to pay her almost thirteen thousand dollars for work she's owed. Because she had the nerve to quit. That's how it looks to me. Now, where a lot of the hate that I saw in the video I did yesterday that made me say, you know what I need to do this video is his biotech companies. So he founded BioVail in 1989. June 30th of 2007, as legal action is imminent on the United States side of things, he takes that company and goes, I'm out of here. You know, kicks it to the side and he's done. Uh, and, and there was legal action imminent. And the company settled for $10 million. It was accounting fraud. It's one of those things with like, okay, here's here's our, our revenues. Here's our expenses. Look how much money we made. And then when you actually look at the books, you find out that's not what was going on at all. So they were misleading adventures, uh, investors. And as soon as that started to get investigated, Melnick went, I got to get out of here. They're investigating me for misleading investors. Keep that in mind because we'll come back to it. And so this was BioVail, which started out as Tamel Pharmaceuticals. And he relaunched a company under that name after leaving BioVail. Yeah. May 2011th, Melnick was banned from senior roles in public companies for five years in Canada. And yet he still owned the Senators because not a public company in Canada, right? Uh, he was fined $565,000, paid an extra hundred and fifty dollars in a civil penalty, and he had previously paid $1 million to the Ontario Securities Commission. I'm sure just for doing such a bang-up job. Yeah. Keep in mind, he has been the owner of the Senators throughout most of this stuff I'm talking to you about. Now, he did found BioVail in 1989, but he sold it in 2007 while he's the owner of the Senators. So, he launched Tamel Pharmaceuticals. The name's changed to, to uh, Aceris, or Aceris. And... He gradually sold his way down. So he came in as the owner and he gradually sold his way down. It looks like last I saw he's a 15% owner if he hasn't sold off those stocks. Um, and, and so there's been no profits for this company in five years, according to what I was reading. No profits for this company in five years. April 2012, it was $4.45 for a share of stock in this company. I checked. Currently, it's at $0.06. Cents. $0.06, cents gets, $0.06 cents Canadian gets you into this company that hasn't made money in approximately five years. So, but again, it's a pharmaceutical company, so that's tricky right off the bat, right? You're gonna have research and development. And honestly, their share was down to two cents a stock. So if you went in and you bought like 
8,000 of them at two cents each, you made $3, 30 bucks. I don't know. But I mean, if, if they, if they end up curing our current ales in the world, they could be worth a ton, right? Melnick sued them. He sued them because he felt they were being mismanaged. And when the stock price dove, it took an absolute nosedive. He sued them because he had lost about $20 million with all of the stock that he owed or that he owned. And uh, so he sued them. And that's the second time he had sued companies that he created. So he sued them for his stock price going down. After already settling out of court and, and his company settling out of court for misleading investors to boost up stock prices. This is why when, when I, I talk about the senators and I talk about the turnaround and the idea, you know, people will say, well, do you think Ottawa's going to win a Stanley Cup? With this guy as the owner? Every time a guy wants to be paid what he's worth, they kick him out. Now, I agree. Carlson trade worked out really well. But I'm going to say right now, Mark Stone... Replacing Stone is damn near impossible. He is one of the best two-way forwards in the game. And I, I, I'm I, not going to be surprised if when some of these kids that they have want to get paid, Melnick goes, I'm not going to pay that. His history as a businessman tells you he doesn't want to pay what he owes. He really likes getting stuff for free, which again is a billionaire thing. And because, again, like I said at the beginning of this, you don't become a billionaire because you share and you're really nice to everybody. You become a billionaire because you're you're hoarding your money and you're either smart with business or you inherit it or whatever it is uh, you you have your that's yours. And so with Melnick and especially if it is true that his his fortune is dwindled, he could be cheaper with the senators than he otherwise would be. He owns that building. He was charging his own charity from the for the senators a lot of money in rent as a charity and trying to tell them where to vet, where to invest the money while his own charity and i don't have that on the board because that was just yesterday that we heard about this his own charity raises about a million dollars gives five thousand dollars for organ donation awareness and then he's trying to tell the senators charity hey you guys need to give for organ donor awareness hey so do you I don't, I don't know where to start with it. I don't, I don't know. And, and I always hear people say, well, can the NHL step in? I don't think so. And I don't think so because none of it to this date can be proved to have affected how he ran the Senators. If you can prove that he took money out of the team to invest in a company of his own in some kind of nefarious manner and didn't tell the, the, the NHL, then yes, I think the NHL could step in and say, you are no longer the owner. We're taking this team and we're going to sell it to somebody else. And then that opens up a whole slew of possibilities, which might include relocation to Quebec. <clears throat> there's there, there's definitely been problems. The Labrette and Flats deal that fell through. Almost every time that we hear that there's some kind of a, a business venture where other companies or other entities, whether it's a city or whatever it is, that they're, they're negotiating with Melnick, it seems to turn sour. And I don't know if it's a need for control. I don't know if it's a need for <clears throat> the, the monetary side to, to just benefit him. Because I haven't been part of any of these negotiations. All I know is that when the Ottawa Senators are looking for a new building, the biggest concession from him was, well, if it's a building I don't own, that's okay too. Because there had been always rumors that he wanted to make sure he owned the building that the Ottawa Senators played in, because then the money's his. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that there's anything the NHL can do because, again, you can't say that he's done anything illegal related to the Ottawa Senators. I definitely wouldn't want to invest in a pharmaceutical company that he runs. I, I wouldn't necessarily like the idea of a pharmaceutical company changing its name not that long after they're founded. Now, maybe it was to get to get away from Tamel Pharmaceuticals and the fact that it was linked to BioVail, maybe, um, or no, BioVail was. Anyways, he's done. He's done. He's done this a lot. This, <laughs> this is this is nothing new. And uh, honestly, I, I I stopped at that point where I'm like, okay, that's that's enough scandal for this video. That's enough to discuss for this video. And again, how many more things do we not know about? 
where Melnick's maybe got a phone call from somebody who he owes money to, and he goes, you're not getting it, and they've gone, you know what, we're not going to take him to court, whatever, screw him. I don't know. I don't know that there's enough here. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about Eugene Melnick, who has been named, at least on one occasion, the worst owner in North American sports. I don't know that he's got a trophy on his mantle for that. I wouldn't be surprised if he did, though. But hey, let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. And for Ottawa fans, let's hope they win a Stanley Cup despite the ownership. Thanks for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.